What's up, my know it alls? It's time for another episode of Star Trek Lower Decks. But before we get into all that, do me a big favor like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow in the algorithm, lets everybody know that you want to be part of the USS Know It All. Now, <laughs> you like that? <coughs> So, a fun episode here that we have to look forward to. So, I want you guys to sit back, relax, because it's time for a bottle episode. Yay. I know, it's going to be a whole lot of fun, but we're going to get into it right now. I just want to start off saying that I was kind of upset we couldn't continue the storyline with the ship. So, no more theories on that for today, for today. Right. Sorry. No, you're good, you're good. Uh, but what they did do is they gave us a lot more new, newness. So it's funny, throughout the whole season, I feel like we've been seeing a bunch of like callbacks and whatnot and sort of half, half realized subplots and storylines. But then last week, we get an episode where it's really all about the Lower Decks people and their history, meaning we started seeing them call back to their own stuff, which is really cool. This episode was no different. It kind of continued that same trend in that it was a bottle episode. Maybe no one all never seen it a bottle episode. Those of you familiar with Star Trek are very familiar with these. I mean, like, I've seen, like, callback, because I watched Golden Girls with my mom, and I've seen, like, callback episodes or whatever of, like, unseen clips, but, like, I've never seen, like, a bottle episode like he's talking about, you know? So, right. and he explained to me that the bottle episodes are basically just ways to, like, save money for the final like episode so they would use one set and then they would just do like callbacks or whatever right exactly oh okay yeah is that i would literally it was funny i didn't say it. i was about to so you did a great job yes that was awesome i don't believe there's that much in terms of savings and money when it comes to animation but for those of us watching star trek it's just as time honored as half of the nostalgia stuff that they keep calling back to, which made it even more special for me. The basic gist of the episode is our team gets stuck on an away mission in a cave. Uh, Mariner, who's hilarious about it, whines. She was so funny this episode. <laughs> I loved her so much. <laughs> she was great. And so she ends up uh, hating the fact that they're there. But uh, So when they get there, everybody has a cave story. As they're stuck in this place, you notice the moss is actually very aggressive. Oh. <laughs> Carnivorous moss? Are you kidding me? So it starts trying to sort of attack them. So the whole time they're trying to come up with ways to save themselves by telling their stories of having been in caves. Now it's also a callback to Paramount having a really bad cave set. So like you saw the same cave set in The Next Generation, in yeah. Voyager, oh yeah. It's the exact, because they only had so much money to put together a That's cave funny, set. That's funny, because didn't I say, I was like, oh wow, all these caves do look alike. I feel like I've been in this cave a hundred times. Huh, caves do all kind of look the same, don't they? Exactly, 100%, <laughs> and that's what they're talking about. As they're telling stories, you find out apparently Boimler has been all buddy-buddy with somebody else named Steve Levy or something. Yeah, Levy. Yeah, and so and who apparently is a conspiracy theorist who believes in the Vendorians, and which are this one aliens, and Boimler's all like, oh no, it's that's not real, this and that, and then poof, the Vendorians show up. And then, uh, uh, and then Tendi, keeps trying to tell a story, remind them about this turbo lift thing, and everyone keeps lying like, no, nothing about the turbo lift story is going to help us here. Because that's not a cave story. Right. And that continues to be this through line, which does come to fruition later. Rutherford tells a story about, you know, that time he had a, he had a kid with the doctor. And you're like... Like, what are you even talking what? about? What? Apparently he had a he had a space baby in that they were they were being taken through a cave system with a, with this one cloned uh, scientist person and that they like touch you and they pass on their genetic after stuff after they die after or like when they're about to die they touch yeah. you and Rutherford had to give birth to a baby and it was a Star Trek C section <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. And then there was this, so this, they're being chased by this alien monster, and Rutherford, being the genius he is, figures out how to use the tricorder to translate based on the growls and starts communicating with it. And you find out it was just protecting its own baby as well. We mean you no harm. We just want to get out of this cave. <laughs> Did you just talk to me? So that was a, that was a fun storyline. I think what I love about that is that the doctor cat person, she hated babies at the fir at like first. Yes. And then towards the end, she was like, no, this one's nice. Like, this is super smart, <laughs> yeah. super cool, sorry. So then you get to the, you finally uh, hear Mariner's story. And Mariner's story is that she literally worked with Delta Shift. And if you guys know anything about Slower Decks, 
nothing beta shift hates worse than delta De delta shift and they have this whole thing with an aging rock thing and it's it's a whole experience but at the end of the day she now respects uh delta shift and everybody's like heartbroken and upset by it and the moss has really cornered them and finally boom it lashes up and they're like and the moss talks to them and basically says you cannot leave until i hear the green one's story <laughs> and everyone's like what and it's this really interesting callback to the first episode. If you remember the very first episode of Lower Decks, they dealt with this rage, uh, this rage virus. It was all, everybody who was like spewing black goo and stuff. Well, this is after that. Apparently they all went into a turbo lift, got stuck in the turbo lift and just spent the day together, like hours on end. And Tendi was like, it was the, it was the greatest day of uh, my blah, blah, blah. It was really sweet. So yeah, man, there you go. Now you know, if knowing's half the battle, you're halfway to be a know-it-all yourself. What's the know-it-all index for this episode for me? Uh, both of us discussed it. Uh, it's an eight and a half for us. Yeah, 8.5. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, man, uh, anything else that caught your eye about the episode? I thought it was cute. I thought every story had an interesting thing happen. I liked how Vandorians, the mm -hmm, aliens, mm -hmm. they had to eat crickets. Um, like that's what they eat, like huge crickets. Um, I like the one with Rutherford, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. translation. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it was awesome. That was super science-y Star Trek stuff, which is, I'm like, right on, man. Yeah. And then right. the, I think my favorite, which one was your favorite story? Sorry, out of the, the I guess you can count Tendies, but at the same time. So I dug, I'm, being a Next Generation fan, I dug Mariner's story only because I totally felt that walking near a thing makes you older, so you have to try to push through it. And I was like, okay, that's I like that one. I think that one was my favorite, too, yeah. even though I didn't really watch Star Trek. No, but, no, but it's okay, so cool. When the way they edited his leg, basically oh Mariner my crashes. Mariner crashes the shuttle. the shuttle thing. We lost power. Shuttles are shaped like bricks. What was I supposed to do? And he breaks his leg, and like they're like, okay, like you have to like fix it, whatever. <laughs> and so they're walking near the thing, and we're like, we need someone younger so we don't like hurt ourselves. So the guy who broke his leg is the youngest one, and it just starts growing wrong, and then it eventually like <laughs> falls off. And like for someone who doesn't really like. Like, personally, I can usually do, like, animation, like, gore, if you will. But it was just, it looked so weird. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I'm, like, covering my eyes because it was just, like, it, it, was it was so gross. unsettling. It was kind of very unsettling. And dude's just crying. He's like, can we just get my leg in case Dr. T can't grow it back? <laughs> like, right on, man. Right on. Me too. Me too, bro. Right. So, yeah, man. All right, comment below. Let us know what you thought of the episode. We really enjoyed it. Wait. What's up? At the end, you just figure out it's just the Vendorians doing another test. That's right. The <laughs> moss was just the Vendorians doing another test. It was so funny. And it's because apparently they like to do these morality tests. And they were like, so they've earned their friendship. Oh, by the way, super voice cast re recycling is super obvious. So that's the one I thing I... didn't think it was that obvious. The only one I could point out was the... Um, the captain head, The captain. Yeah, who played the head Vendorian. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and... Yeah, but it was so, because it's, and it's funny, that happens all the time. Let's be real. So, anyways, all right, guys, comment below. Let us know what you thought of the episode. Did you enjoy all the new in-canon stuff, as well as all the new planets, which apparently all have the same cave system? So, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. Never forget. Everyone loves a know-it-all. Bye, guys.